Hello, my name is Richard the Dungeon Crawler. Today we're going to discuss an iconic TSR module. This module was rated number 18 in Dungeon Magazine's 30 Greatest Adventures of All Time, and I think it deserves to be a little bit higher. At the start of the adventure, your party is being pursued through a dense jungle when you spot an overgrown temple. When you approach, the earth gives way and you fall down a large pit. The party is now stuck at the lower levels of a Mesoamerican temple and they must find a way out. If you would like to discuss why I think the hidden shrine of Tomoachan is so amazing and maybe hear the sound of my Aztec death whistle, then step inside my dungeon. Full disclosure, I completely forgot about this module. I remember playing through the big modules like Keep on the Borderland, The Lost City, but I was left a comment about the art packet that comes with the Hidden Shrine of Tomoe Chan, so I immediately bought the PDF. The second I started reading this module, the memories came flooding back to me. I thought it was cool back then and even today. I like how it's set outside of medieval Europe. It's in an ancient civilization called the Omens, which draw heavy influence on the Aztec and Mayan civilizations. I thought it was great to have a Dungeons & Dragons adventure in an area based in Mesoamerican cultures because I grew up hearing about the Aztec cultures. So now I get to roleplay in that environment. I remember the great artwork even today. There were two releases of the module, and I was familiar with the one with the reddish cover. It was stylized, but to me it signaled that this was a very much different experience since it was designed after Mesoamerican art. The battle takes place next to a stone altar. The fighter doesn't look like a traditional European fighter. He is lightly armored and wears a feathered headdress. He also uses a traditional weapon. This is a wooden club with obsidian blades. The weapon is like a baseball bat with glass blades that are sharper than steel. The module comes with an additional art packet, like in Tomb of Horrors. Some of the art is simplistic, while others are highly detailed. My favorite is number two, which is a Mesoamerican statue. Either line diagrams or highly detailed pictures, I think this art brings life into the adventure, and to me shows great respect to the culture. Here's some art by Frederick Catherwood from my copies of Incidents and in Travels. In Central America. He, along with John Lloyd Stevens, explored Mexico and Central America in the 1800s. I think the authors must have did a good amount of research before creating this adventure. I wonder what the authors used as an influence for this amazing adventure. This is a quick side note, but it amazes me that there's still unexplored Mesoamerican cities. These cities have been grown over by the jungle and are so remote that they're vastly unexplored. If you're interested, please check out Luke Cavern's YouTube channel. Link in the description. Because the jungle has grown so much over it. But this would have been encased in stone exactly like this. But the roots of the trees have grown into and between the stones and pulled the pyramid apart. Just like this right here. All of this would have been fine white limestone that would have been painted over potentially red, or blue, sometimes green. But in the Mesoamerican world, it's a pin cushion with no more room for pins to be put in. It's completely covered with ancient cities far beyond the world of ancient Egypt, far beyond the ancient Near East, the Middle East. This was a population that was more than three times the size of medieval Europe during medieval Europe's heyday. Ancient temples like this are everywhere. Less than 1% of ancient Maya temples or sites in general have been excavated. And they estimate that potentially around 60%, maybe even 70%, haven't even been officially named, charted, mapped, anything. Okay, let's get back to adventuring. This module was played in the 1979 Origins Tournament. As your party is hacking through a jungle, you see the overgrown pyramid. Think Raiders of the Lost Ark or the OG Tomb Raider. When I spoke about the Lost City, I said I loved exploring an ancient civilization, and the Hidden Shrine of Tomoachan gives me that same level of excitement. But it's less about exploring and about more trying to get the hell out alive. The fold-out map is one of the best in my opinion. I like it because it is simple and straightforward. Some of the mega dungeons get kind of chaotic and overly complicated. This layout might seem like a railroad, but in fact has various secret passages, so a party 
wouldn't always necessarily move to the temple the same way. The book provides three pre-generated characters for this adventure. There's a fighter, a cleric, and a thief magic user. Of course, you can still use your current party members, but I wouldn't recommend it. The pre-gens have specific skills and equipment that will be useful in this adventure. Also, I wouldn't want to risk my hard-earned character on this grueling adventure. This adventure provides a scorecard to run this adventure as a tournament. For instance, you get points for finding secrets or negotiating with monsters. You also get points subtracted if you rush into battles. I don't think I would have done well in this type of system, but I remember reading this in middle school and just wanting to play in one of these big Dungeons & Dragons tournaments. But with the information this module provides, you could actually run one. The first new monster is the Nereid. This is a beautiful sea creature that could mesmerize male characters. You know, I really wasn't too impressed with this character since a monster manual already had the Nixie and Nymphs. But the Nereid does have some unique abilities though. Their only physical attack is to launch projectile spit that causes blindness. What I liked about this monster was the invisible shawl. If the shawl is destroyed, the Nereid will dissolve. If players can get a hold of the shawl, then the Nereid can be commanded by the holder of the shawl. The second new monster is really cool. This is the first appearance of the gibbering mouther, and this is one gnarly monster. This is a big fleshy mass of eyes and mouths. They will try to eat anything edible in sight. When they spot their prey, they will start a gibberish chant. This chant causes confusion. They can spit and bite. Their spit causes petrification. Watch out for this one. It will be a tough fight. What's up with these two new monsters spitting? Let me know in the comments if you like any of these monsters and if you use them. The room descriptions are insanely detailed. They use standard text boxes with additional text below. Nowadays, there's a term called text walls. When I first heard this term, I immediately thought about this module. This module has dense, dense text. So it is a truly a wall of text. Many people have said to run this adventure, you'll need to get past the text wall. And I think that is 100% true. I read this module for the first time when I was in middle school. I actually read this adventure a few times in middle school, but never attempted to run it. I must have missed my savings throw versus that damn, damn text wall. But I did rip it off a few times, though. I worked on an adventure that had different Mesoamerican groups all inhabiting a lost pyramid, like in the lost city. These groups were all battling each other for supremacy, so the party needed to join or fight the various groups in a more traditional dungeon crawl. There's going to be a spoiler alert now. I'm going to discuss a few of my favorite encounters. So if you're a player, find a dungeon master to run it for you. And if you find a good one, let me know so I can join. Tomb of Horrors is very trap heavy and has less combat, but I think this adventure strikes a good balance between dangerous traps and encounters. And many of the encounters have a unique twist. For instance, there is a mummified centaur. The mummy centaur will block characters from proceeding through the tomb. That was the first time I've seen a mummy that wasn't the human variety. Another crazy encounter takes place with an intelligent crayfish. If attacked, he'll call his bodyguard a giant hermit crab. The module says in combat, the crab will drag around its shell and try to pin characters with it. Another encounter is with a were jaguar. It has a permanent statue spell cast on it, so it looks like stone. If the party takes any treasure from the room, the were jaguar will attack. But along with combat encounters is poisonous gas. In rooms 1 through 38, there is a constant poisonous gas that will weaken party members. For every turn, each party member will need to roll a 1d6. The gas forces party members to get through the lower levels as quickly as possible. In fact, the pre-gen characters have scrolls to slow the poison. The pre-gen characters are definitely set up for this adventure. One fun encounter the game calls Pelota. In the module, it says, Dare not open this pit unless you're willing to meet the challenge of the game. Beneath the stone covering of the pit are skeletal remains of the losers. If any of the treasure is taken, a rubber ball animates. This rubber ball will attack players. The players will need to smack the ball through the goal, which is on the opposite side of the hallway to end the encounter. 
Another great encounter comes with this beautiful picture. The party comes to a large room with two carved pillars. Beyond the pillars is a massive diorama of the ancient city of Tomoachan at its prime. Large pyramids and temples can be seen. There is a large lake with a dragon boat. The first character to step across the column triggers a wall of fire that separates that party member. A dolphin ganger comes out of the coffin and attacks the isolated character. It will try to take out the character so it could replace him. I always love dioramas. I wish I had the skills to recreate this. Come on, dirty basement terrains. This should be your next project. The mirror encounter is really cool. The players see a large mirror at the end of a hallway. If the player stares into the mirror, they must make a savings throw versus petrification. If failed, the players will have the appearance of being under a hold person spell. But in the player's mind, they are fighting a feathered warrior. The warrior has the same stats as the players. But this is not just an imaginary battle. If the player loses, that's it for the player. My favorite encounter is when the party sees a seated warrior statue. This statue is wearing a feathered headdress and holds a scepter. The statue will duplicate the face of the first person who enters the room. Only the person being duplicated can remove the scepter. If the player holds the scepter for five segments, then the player will turn to stone and the statue will turn to flesh. The statue is actually a chaotic evil creature. It has the memories of the duplicated character. The player cannot return to flesh until the monster is destroyed and the scepter is touched to the defeated monster. Does anyone know why Goodman Games has not done an original Adventures Reincarnated on this module? They could flesh out the Jungle City. It seems like it'll be a good module to reincarnate. They would definitely have my money. Truly, thank you for watching all the way through and hearing me reminisce about one of my favorite modules. Please give me a like. It would definitely help the channel. Also, make sure you're subscribed and you'll be notified when the next adventure is ready. And I'll see everybody on the next Dungeon Crawl. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see what this Aztec death whistle sounds like. Here goes. I'm sorry about my neighbors.